So we got a, a, a question recently about how to enrol for TBY uh, courses and how to fill in the enrolment forms. Uh, I can understand that, you know, with these enrolment forms, they can be a bit daunting really and making sure you get the right information down and sorted can be can be a bit scary, to be honest. So quick run through of how, how this works. So really what we've got is a four page document, you see here up in the top, we're at Rev 25 of this document, so it's it's constantly been looked at. So make sure that you have the latest enrollment form from TWI from the website. You see the first section here gives you some contact information for both the TWI uh, Cambridge, so that's Grant Park uh, in main address, that's the headquarters, and that phone number and, and exam email. And along with TWI North, that's the base up in Middlesbrough, uh, quite a big train centre. It's where the dive tank is and, and a lot of other things. Been there a long time. Uh, so that's there at the top. You then have to add your information. So if you are already a TWI candidate, you know you've already done things, you may already know your candidate number. So you can drop it into this text box here. I'm not going to fill this in, I'll let you guys do that with your own information. Um, the event title, so that's what, what you want to do. So we could put here, well, you know what, let's say we're gonna do our CSWIP 3.0, uh, 3.1, so CSWIP 3.1 welding inspector, okay. The date, the date you wanna do it, I mean, I'll put today's date just to uh, to add something into here, uh, Twenty the date in right James come on your PIM private address so where you live uh, with with the private address here your correspondence address if different from above so maybe you want them to write directly to you in your workplace um, but you only need to fill that in if it's different from your home address invoice address but it says here if different from the below so you can hear see here you've got a sub a sponsoring company and address. So if your company, if you're lucky enough for them to be footing the bill for your, your for your course, their information would go in there. If not, you would put your invoice and address in here, which you know may be your home address or something like that as well. So you know you you'll fill that independently in and, and fill that. You have it a, a bit here at the bottom saying so you know do you have any disabilities or special needs? This is where you, you know you can say you need special access, maybe call it paper or um, a bit extra time, maybe dyslexic, something like that. You know, this is the point where you, you say yes and then you get your uh, get your communication going to see if anything can be changed as part of uh, the engineering, the uh, exam rules for you. Then we'll come back to the top here. Of course, you've got the method of payments, you know, how we pay and what we do. Company PO order can go into uh, to this box here if need be with the approval manager's name. So who's signing it off for you? Of course, here you need the sponsor's signature. So the person who is paying for your course will, will sign in there. Uh, it says here, remember, handwritten signature is required. So you need a wet signature, uh, not a Adobe um normal computer signature it needs to be actually the, the traceable to a person as, as such i don't know why we still do that surely by now we can we can use adobe uh, electronic signatures quite happily but you know uh, rules are rules where you want to do the course so i, I don't know let's say you know we're going to go to abington which is the granta park site you know the um the wording doesn't help that the Institute are quite, you know, and I guess this is just for historical, are quite happy to jump between the term Abington and Granta Park or Great Abington, Cambridge, HQ, you know, all of this is, is much the same. Uh, you've got Middlesbrough in the northeast of England, Rotherham, Port Talbot in Wales, and Aberdeen in Scotland. So again, if you're doing a course at one of the other international offices again make sure you've got the correct signing form because it might be slightly different to deal with the, the the different regional offices you know whether that be in southeast asia or the middle east uh, 
anywhere like that. Uh, yeah, where where did you hear about them? So, you know, normally it's just we all know somewhere along the line see SWIP was involved somewhere, so it could be that, but word of mouth maybe. The old GDPR, so if you're not used to European legislation, GDPR is our data protection laws. Uh, so you have to, to click there if you're happy for them to, to send your information to uh, to you. If not, then you can leave it be and they shouldn't then send you uh, junk mail, in essence. Are you a member of any of the, the either the Weldon Joint Society, so the WGS, or an industrial member of the TWI? So if your company is a, a, a fully paid up member, you know, it's like, minimum of five grand a year to be an industrial member of TWI. Uh, click in there and there might be a discount, you know, I think it's five or ten percent or something like that for industrial members on, on training they buy from, from the institute. So that goes on there. Uh, page two, we've got this applied examination we're applied for. So we said we want to do a CSWIP 3.1 so we'll click an examining body there at CSWIP and also it will be our initial exam. Um, so you can have renewals if it's a 10 year renewal or retest, you know, if you unfortunately, if you you, you drop some marks and you didn't get that, didn't get all the way through. Of course, this, this sheet also does PCN, AWS, BGAS and ESNT because the Institute teach and can award certification through them uh, bodies. If you've already got a number for big S or PCN or you already have certification held, you'll fill in here. So let's say we're going to do our, our three point uh, one. So let's say we've already hauled our C SWIP 3.0. Um, then we come here. So section two is for C SWIP weld inspector examinations. So for us, we're only worried about this part of the form. Uh, because we're not doing any others here. So please tick the examination that we want to go for. So here's our 3.1. It's a little bit like rep re repetition from the top, but you know, uh, we just fill in the boxes. So here we've got a statement asking about pre-certification uh, experience. So it's saying here that we must have pre-certification experience in line with the scheme document that applies to our course. So because we are doing a visual inspector course, what we can do is open this document here, which is CSWIP WI 692. And in here, it's going to tell us uh, what our requirements are for getting on the course. So if you look back here, uh, CSWIP 3.1, we can either be a well inspector for three years, but we've got to fall in line with a C a clause 1.2.2. So if we open this back up, 1.2.2 here, tells us what we've got to have been doing here and uh, the, the areas we need to be covering. So that's everything really in this document from uh, A, so all the 3.0 work experience plus the 3.1 things for a minimum of three years or you could just be a CSW 3.0 for uh for two years and be covering those same duties you could be a welding instructor or welding for a foreman a supervisor for a minimum of one year again it's a bit of a faster way of, of getting through it but you must have your experience signed by the employer don't forget this this here so Let's say we're saying we've already gone through a CSWIP 3.0 route. So I would click that one and we'll, the, the Institute would already know and already have my information about my CSWIP 3.0 and we can go from there. But if you're going for any of the others, especially the uh, mature candidate routes, make sure you've got uh, your employer to, to agree that you have actually been doing that. Um, that's important to do. And then what a lot of people miss is you have two lines here at the bottom. It says, please give a detailed statement on how you meet these requirements. So it, it always makes me laugh a little bit. We've got, we've got to give a detailed statement, but we're only given two lines. 
to write that in. So here you're going to say, well, in your own words, how do you meet the requirements? So we can say here, held C Swift 3.0 for two years, working in accordance with the requirements of the scheme document. And maybe maybe we can say working in full accordance. I'll make it try to make it as clear. Um, maybe say uh, duties include qualification of welders, welding inspection. You know, so let's say visual welding inspection. And report writing. You know, there you go. I think that kind of covers very quickly everything that is in sections 1.2.1 and 1.2.2. Um, including, yeah, try to get everything right though. Right, so uh, do that. And of course, we can miss out uh, the section nine, uh, section three here, because we're not going to be underwater. Section four, we can miss out because we're not an NDT. Section five is plant inspection, so we can miss that again. Any other examination, so you can hear they've got plastics welding and offshore visual inspector. We can uh, ignore those things there, uh, big gas type things. And then we get to section seven, which is our declaration. So what you need to do, I won't read all of these out now. You need to read through each of these points and make sure you understand them and you're happy to sign off against that requirement. Uh, the one I would like to pull your attention to here is um, this statement here that says, I understand that any false statement may result in my examination being invalidated. Um, so make sure you're happy and, and, and you go from that. There's also a little bit of information here about cancellation charges, um, if you know if you if you, you try to cancel fairly close to the course so make sure you have you all of that and then stick your handwritten signature into the box and then you've got section 8 which is your employer's verification so this is where you need to find your manager your HR representative to um, fill in this information and sign off to say you are actually what, what you've said above, somebody else is verifying. They stick their signature on that. You wrap this all up, you print it off, you send it off to uh, TWI. Uh, you can email it through, I believe now. Uh, discuss your dates with the uh, the girls and, and gentlemen in the office and then get yourself on your course. It, it looks like a complicated form to fill in. But if you say you're just going for one course, let's say the C Swift 3.1, it's it's a very small part of the four pages you really need to worry about. People miss all the time this little bit of extra information to stick at the bottom. So make sure you, you fill that in because that is very, very often missed and, and you need to have it filled in before uh, everything can be sorted and make sure your employer or a verifier can can verify that to say yes, what what you've said above is correct, and you have the experience to sit the course. So, good luck with that. Uh, hope you get your uh, enrollment form sorted out and and pumped in, and we will see you next time.